There's always one wise guy <laughs> in addition to me. Uh, uh, can never be too hard on the wise guys of the world being in that group. Okay. Ephesians 2, 1 through 5. It's hard to wait. I have to say that a certain way. It's hard to wait. It's still there. Mark is still there. We'll be back to our regularly scheduled program after Advent. Twelve forty two. It's Ephesians two, one through five. And you were dead in the trespasses and sins in which you once walked, following the course of this world, following the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work in the sons of disobedience among whom we all once lived in the passions of our flesh, carrying out the desires of the body and the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, like the rest of mankind. But God, being rich in mercy because of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, he made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. It's a great passage. This is one of the greatest passages in the Bible. Is tomorrow's Cyber Monday by any chance? You know this, right? Cyber Monday? Normally. That's been like Black all month Black Friday, right? It's like, no, oh, Black, no, we're doing it the whole week. No, the whole month. No, no, we're still doing it, right? It's just, that never ends. And um, doesn't everything just seems like it's been squashed together? Enjoy. <laughs> you know, I, I went the whole year without leaving early for a baseball game. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> but everything seems like it's been kind of squashed together this year. You notice that? Well, Halloween and then, the, and then the elections that are, that are over, no, not over, I guess, and then someday they'll be over, someday. And then they'll run into the next election. That's what'll happen. And then, and then Thanksgiving, and we weren't supposed to go anywhere, and uh, that. And um, and now it's Advent, and it's still November. And it's it's all it's like this is a lot. And if you don't have your Christmas lights, unfortunately, you know we're on top of things here, right? But if you don't have your light, you're kind of kind of behind. And it's just all happening so fast and kind of at the same time not fast enough. Let's get this year over with. This has been a crazy year. But if you're a kid right now, and we have no kids here, except those who are undeclared children like some of us, um, it's all kind of background noise to Christmas is coming. Well, Christmas, it's right around the corner, can't get here fast enough. Uh, if you're a kid, you can't wait. You know, this is the big time, you know, and it's, you know, what's in it for me? It's pretty much about that. What am I going to get? And I better get what I asked for. And, <clears throat> you know, some of the magic of Christmas is gone when you're, when you're negotiating for your presence. You know, that whole thing. But it's so easy to confuse the real meaning of Christmas, and which is Emmanuel, God with us. That's, that's the reason. That's the only reason. That's the only reason for the season, right? The rest of this is just buzz. It's background. It's, it's kind of superfluous to the main, the main event. 
So today, first Sunday of Advent, the coming of Jesus Christ into the world. Not to condemn the world, but to save us who would be lost. And who is that? That's all of us. That's everyone. We would be absolutely lost. There's no hope without Jesus Christ. And if they were here, that would be an amen. Okay, thank you. It was a little prompt. So, Christmas, Advent, it's the promise of a new life in Christ. If Jesus hadn't come into the world, we really wouldn't know what God is like. We wouldn't know the joy of forgiven sins. We wouldn't, we, we would have no concept of grace. We wouldn't know the hope of heaven. We wouldn't have this, this assurance of our salvation. We'd just be wandering in hopelessness and sin from one thing to the next. Oh, Emmanuel, God with us, that's the greatest gift. John puts it like this in 1 John, and this is the testimony that God gave us eternal life, and this life, this life is in His Son. Whoever has the Son of His, uh, whoever has the Son has life. Whoever has the Son has life. Whoever does not have the Son of God does not have life. Very clear. It's very clear. This morning we're going to be looking at three things that make up this perfect gift, this new life that Advent promises. The first is that Advent promises new life in Christ because it means we now know what God is like. We know what God is like. Coming of Christ gave us a living picture of who God is. Put a face on God. Gave God a personality. Colossians 1.15 says, He, Jesus, is the image of the invisible God. He's the image of the invisible God. This is what we mean by the incarnation. Jesus came as a baby. He came incarnate. He came to earth wrapped in a human body. The God of heaven came to live among us that we might know what he is truly like. And having been in Mark for all these years now, um, we're getting to know what Jesus, what God is truly like. It's an amazing person. Just an astonishing person who turns conventional thinking on its head time after time after time. Last week while I was walking in the uh, I walked a hundred miles last week. Yeah, I did that. <laughs> it's really kind of bizarre. Because it's almost all inside my house. Yeah, and you're like, yeah, you're, you're crazy. <laughs> that confirmed it. I had my suspicions, but that pretty much did it for me. Yeah, I have this little track, and I go around, and I listen to stuff. Yeah, it's it's it's, it's kind of yeah. <laughs> yeah, you should see the looks I'm getting right now. Like, yeah, I kind of knew, um, but I listened to the whole Messiah twice. And if you ever listen to that, it's long. It's a long piece of piece of work, and uh, I'll probably listen to it a few more times. I love that work. It's just. It's so profound. And if you like music, the kind of music I like, I just don't get tired of hearing that. And it has one of the most spectacular amens that's ever been put to music. And, you know, if you don't listen to anything but the Hallelujah Chorus, which, all right, we'll give you that, Wendell. But listen to the amen. And, and 
Worthy is the lamb that was slain. Just before that is just so profound, so true. The Messiah, it's all scripture. The whole thing is scripture. It's, it's an amazing piece. But what if Jesus hadn't come? There would be no music called Messiah. Jesus hadn't come to the earth. We'd only have the Old Testament. Not nothing, but only the Old Testament. We wouldn't have heard about the love of a very, very personal, loving, sacrificial God. God would never have visited the world in human form. We would have no hope of his returning to earth. There'd be no redemption, no grace. Without, without, without Jesus coming, um, it would be like Narnia, if you've read uh, C.S. Lewis, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. Always winter and never Christmas. That was Narnia. Always winter, never Christmas. It sounds bleak. That was a bleak world. We would never have heard in John, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. We would have never heard that. Or John 15, 11, These things I have spoken to you that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be full. We wouldn't have joy. We might have happiness, we might have giddiness, we might have jokes, we might have all these things, but joy is something of the heart. John 10, I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. We'd have life. Such as it is, we would have it. But what would it be? That's why we sing about Emmanuel at Christmas. God is with us. And he was with us 2,000 years ago and he's with us today. He keeps, he keeps showing us what God is like. We have a God who cared enough to come. That was a huge sacrifice. It's a huge sacrifice. He showed us what he was like. He taught us that our value to God was more important than what anyone else thought about us. Our value to God is more important than what anyone else thought of us. I, I watch reruns of the Antique Roadshow. The same ones over and over. It's like, okay, I, I, I see one hand just doing your hair. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I love it when people, you know, they paid a couple dollars and they went to the garage sale and they have a whole story. Well, my car broke. I wasn't planning on going. My car broke down and then I went to this garage sale and I saw this table and it looked kind of junky and so I put it in my garage, and I really didn't think too much about it. You know, the, the, the whole story, right? And then they, well, I thought I'd just bring it and see if it's worth it. Well, it's worth $250,000, you know. And, and what, did you, what did you pay for it? You know, they, they, it's always that. At the end, what did you pay for it? Well, the guy knows, right? And um, it's, I, I just love watching those things over and over. You know, the, yeah, that blanket was just sitting on my bed. Right? 500 grand. Yeah, it was, it was crazy. I, I love those stories. And I see that happen. I think about how God goes about taking people who aren't seen as very valuable. And he places a very high value on them. Because God is a God of redemption. We're not junk to him. We see it in the life of Jesus over and over. You know, the outcasts of society become special. 
Last week I was talking about the disciples being people just like us, and they were they were just regular guys. The first four, they're all just fishermen. They're just out, not, not not a bad, you know, that's good income, family business, right? And they were just doing regular jobs. They weren't celebrities or professional athletes or. You know, politicians or influencers. You know, now we have influencers, right? There's self-designated influencers. I don't know how that gets, uh, how they get that appellation. But um, none of those, they were just regular people like us. And, you know, the sinful and the sick and the poor and the weak, they were the people that Jesus pulled out of the trash. I mean, they weren't trash, but they were nobodies. And he transformed them into treasures. If Jesus hadn't come, we'd have never known that about God. We wouldn't have known there was hope, hope for all of us. And because Jesus showed us what God was like, He's our influencer, right? He's our influencer. We want to be like him. We want to have his opinions. You know, we want to care about what he thinks is important. When we get to know Jesus, we're transformed. We're transformed by his grace. We're renewed by his love. We extend grace to others because... He extended grace to us. We don't do that just because we're nice people. We do it we do it because he did it. And it's not just because he tells us to do it, because he's working through us. We're not getting the credit there. He's working through us. And we forgive because We've been forgiven, and it feels so good. Have you ever forgiven somebody? It feels better than the person who's getting the forgiveness. It's like a weight coming off. And we give because he gave to us. If, if giving, liberality, charity, if that's your gift, which is a really cool gift, I think. You just almost can't, can't not do that. It, it, it doesn't feel right if you're not giving. And why is that? Not because you're such a great person. It's because God gave you that gift, gave you that gift, and that's how you enjoy life. Because Jesus came, we know what God is like. God being with us, Emmanuel. Secondly, Advent promises new life because it means our sins can be forgiven. Wow. Since Jesus came, we know the freedom that forgiveness brings. Forgiveness is freedom. It's such a freedom. Like I just said, this huge weight off of your shoulders. We can forgive ourselves and others because we've experienced that. It's liberating. And if Jesus had never come, we would only have commandments to follow. Oh, did I do them all today? Where is my checklist? <sighs> Exhausting. We would never know that God so loved the world that he gave his only son. We wouldn't know that. It wouldn't have happened. The second part of that, for God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. We wouldn't know that. We would never have had the opportunity to experience that. We would be missing, we'd be missing the Savior. There'd be no talk of this Wonderful, absolute forgiveness. No talk of reconciliation to God. Only laws to obey. Legalism would rule the day. 
You know, the best of us would be Pharisees. That's an unpleasant thought. Let's see your checklist. There would be no frame of reference for the word grace. You know, grace would be, well, what do I owe you? We would talk about justice and people getting what they deserved rather than finding mercy with God. We'd all be in bondage. 1 John 3 says, See what kind of love the Father has given to us, that we should be called children of God. And so we are. We're children of God because we're forgiven. It's as simple as humbling ourselves and asking for his forgiveness. And it becomes more than forgiveness because it brings about this, this transformation in our lives. We're liberated. We're free to be the person God wants us to be. We're free to be used of God. 2 Corinthians 3.18 And we all, with unveiled face, beholding the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from one degree of glory to another. For this comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. We're not changing on our own. This comes from the Lord. We didn't go to the bookstores that don't exist anymore, but that, the, the, you know, and go to the self-help section and, you know, buckle up and really knuckle down and change. No, it's the Holy Spirit working through us. And all of this is for one, one overarching purpose. And their third point is Advent promises a new life in Christ. Because it means we have the hope of heaven. Come Lord Jesus. We have the hope of heaven. And that was made possible by Jesus. Think about what the world would feel like if there was no hope of heaven. I'm sure we've all heard John Lennon's song, Imagine, right? And they always play that with such holy reverence. Have you ever, you know, it's like, hush, you know. And then every time I hear that song, I just get depressed. It just makes me sick. And I'm not kidding. I'm like, oh, I hate that song. Imagine there's no heaven. It's easy if you try. No hell below us, above us only sky. Oh, that sounds so wonderful. But what if there is a hell below us? Or somewhere. It's a depressing song. That's a song about hopelessness. But it sounds so wonderful. You know, I don't care how many happy, swaying people with lighters you put together. You know, I... You know, even if we save our climate, we're eco-friendly, we, we don't eat meat anymore, you know, all these things, which are fine things to do. You know, use uh, the latest, greatest, I'm trying to think of the product, the, the big thing now. That, but we can't save ourselves. We can't, no matter how good we are, no matter how disciplined we are, no matter how much weight I lose. You know, I walk a hundred miles every week. I can't save myself doing that. You know, what do you say at the funeral of someone you love if Jesus hadn't come? No hope beyond the grave. You couldn't talk about heaven. No hope for eternal life with God. 1 Corinthians 15, if in Christ we have hope in this life only, we are of all people most to be pitied. Of all people. 
most to be pitied. Jesus Christ hadn't come, there'd be no, <laughs> there'd be no book of Revelation. No hope for a returning Savior who would overcome the world and open heaven for us. We wouldn't ever hear, well done, good and faithful servant. You know, enter into the joy of your master. We would never hear that. No hope for that. No hope of a resurrection. No eternal life. Nothing to anticipate. Except the closing of the casket. Coldness of the grave. I know that sounds bleak. But that's what it is. But because Jesus came, all that has changed. We live in a, in a joyful anticipation of what is to come. And I've stood around a lot of deathbeds in my life as a chaplain in a place where lots of people died. Almost everybody went home, but it, you know, a big place in a trauma center, there's a lot of opportunity to stand around deathbeds. And the difference between the hopeless and the hopeful But because Jesus came, all that has changed. We live in this joyful anticipation of what is yet to come. But it's hard to wait. And I say that sounding like a little kid, maybe. I'm not sure if I'm capable of sounding like a little kid, but it's hard to wait. When our kids were small, we would buy this is a ridiculous number of Christmas presents. It was just staggering. And then we would get all these presents from church. And so they, they, they would just, it would be a pile, a pile of presents, but things to open, you know, just stuff. And, and it would start like now. Which was really tough on the kids. You know, it was really hard. Um, we would cut down our Christmas tree. Do they still do it, Kathy? It's the Saturday. Did you do it yesterday? Oh, first Saturday, oh, first Saturday in December. Okay, so my memory failed me. So it was like a week. A week from now, we let Thanksgiving actually simmer a little bit. So the first week of uh, of December. On Saturday, we'd go out, this group of, now those, now the little kids that were with us then are the parents now, right? And uh, we'd cut our tree down, so that would be there, and, um, and then this pile of presents, like the first week of December. And, and one of Ben, I, I quoted Ben last week, here he shows up again this week, one of his first sentences, it's hard to wait. He was just a little guy, two or three years old, just you know, just stringing together a couple words that were heavy on his heart. And he was about four. I was at work, and I got this call from Lois, who was laughing. And it was still several, several days um, before Christmas, and Ben's room was upstairs. He came tearing down the stairs and rushed over and started opening presents. You know, fortunately, Lois was there to stop him. And I don't know if he, you know, if he dreamed it was Christmas or. Um, you know, maybe he just got confused, or, or maybe he thought, um, you know, he could nail a few presents before he got stopped. I don't know what was going on in his head. But, yeah, they were his presents. But it just wasn't time yet. His gifts were to remain wrapped until the appointed time, thank you very much. Yeah, it wasn't time yet. It's hard to wait. Christmas means that 
Christ has given us the gift of heaven. And we're waiting. We're waiting. At this point, our gift is still wrapped. But if you've accepted Christ, there's a package with your name on it. We know what awaits us. It's the hope of heaven. It's our gift. And we would never have received it if it weren't for Christmas. If it weren't for Advent. If Jesus hadn't come to earth. Right now we're waiting. But that day will come and we'll enjoy the gift of heaven in all of its, in all of its unwrapped glory. This incredible choir of Hallelujah. So, you know, because Jesus came, we know what God is like. We experience forgiveness for our sins, the transformation of our hearts and our minds. We become new creatures with Him. We receive the promise of heaven and eternal life. What better gifts can we ask for? If you've received Christ, and I think I know everybody here, and you have, and I hope you're enjoying these gifts. Because gifts can be returned, and I'm not saying you lose your salvation, but sometimes you don't live in the joy of your salvation. I hope you're living in joy today. I hope you're enjoying all the gifts God is giving you because we know they just keep coming. They just keep coming. Every good and perfect gift is from above. This is in James. Coming down from the Father of lights. Lord, we thank you that Lord, we thank you that you've given us the perfect gift in Jesus Christ our Lord. We thank you that not only have you promised never to leave us or forsake us, but that promise is there for eternity. I thank you that there is hope for us beyond this life and that you've made certain of that. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen.